Hello. So good morning, everybody. Hi. So <laughs> hope everybody is uh, recovered from last night. I'm not. <laughs> so this will be fun. Um, yeah. So welcome to making super friends, uh, forming allies within the gaming community. Uh, my name is Justin Saint. Uh, I'm a drag performer. Um, and I'm also involved um, in the Vancouver, BC gaming community. I run two uh, nerd organizations. One's a gaming-oriented gamer club. Uh, we host two to three meetups a month. Um, and we started with about a dozen people. Now we see about 50 to 60 people every meetup. Um, and I also have a second uh, group for cosplay. So it's more about like special events, going to bars, kind of like dressing up and having fun, going to conventions. Um, so that one's the BC Super Friends, which is what the the title is named after. Um, yeah, and that one that one I found has a lot more allies in it, so that's kind of what inspired this panel. Uh, my name's Ian. I help run the Vancouver Gamers. Um, I'm a massive board game player. Um, I play a lot of board games and get people to play board games essentially. So that's what I do. It's what he does. I call him my non-sexual life partner. Um, I'm a bit of a rogue here. I am not from Vancouver. I currently live in Houston, Texas. Anybody else here live in Houston by chance? OK, I didn't think so. It's yeah. Time to make friends. Yeah, I, I came uh, from Vegas. I work in the game industry. I'm a community manager. Can everybody hear me OK? OK, maybe, maybe it's the ringing in my head right now. I can't, I can't hear myself. Um, and before that, I was uh, teaching English in China for a year. So I, I guess I have a little bit of a perspective on how to make uh, friends uh, that are in places that aren't already San Francisco, you know, accepting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, so before we kind of start talking about allies, we're first going to talk about um, kind of how we made connections first in the gay community. Because I know, like, when I started, like, I'm an immigrant. Uh, I wasn't always Canadian. <laughs> if anyone caught the Maleficent jokes yesterday about me being Canadian, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, yeah, Vancouver, BC. Um, so I moved there uh, about 10 years ago now. Um, I'm originally from Manila, and in the Philippines, actually, uh, I was a lot more sequestered. It's like, ooh. <laughs> I'm not going to tell my life story, I promise. Um, so I, I am a big gamer because they're um, kind of we're kind of like upper middle class. I wasn't allowed to leave the house because there was like a lot of like risk of being kidnapped. Like my, one of my uncles actually got kidnapped for ransom, like crazy. We're not even that rich. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and then, so when we moved here, it was kind of a shift because then uh, here in North America, I was able to like kind of go out more. Like I was actually able to go out by myself. Um, which is weird, but I've always had this kind of like sequestered gaming was my way of exploring, and and I usually did it with family because I'm an only child, but I had cousins, so that was kind of my my way of socializing. And I do realize that a lot of people in kind of smaller kind of towns, I've kind of talked to people in like Kelowna, BC, which is a small town we have near Vancouver, and they kind of have that similar experience growing up where there wasn't that much to do because they weren't in the city, so a lot of them spent their socializing with other gamers, you know, like ex playing Final Fantasy together, stuff like that. Um, so when I went to Canada, uh, I found that I made a lot of friends that were either straight gamers or gay. And I didn't quite have that connection yet because, you know, my straight gamers were awesome, but the moment they started talking about boobs, I was like, eh. <laughs> and then, my gay friends, most of them were like, the moment I started talking about anything nerdy, they'd be like, oh, you're that one. And I'm like, which is fine, you know, I'd still go to the bars with them. But there was that, like, I really wanted to dish about the new Final Fantasy or Dragon Age or whatever, and I just couldn't. So I ended up going to the gaygamer.net forums. <laughs> like, I remember when forums were still a thing before Reddit. Um, so I, I, I usually used, went to go online to different forums, and I found, uh, you know, found people to talk to about games who were also gay. And then I found a sub forum for Vancouver. And I was like, hey, guys, why don't we all like, hang out, meet up? Um, I do have a bit of an event planning background. So that helped, because uh, then we managed to get something actually together. Because they've been talking about doing it for the longest time, but no one actually organized anything. Um, yeah, and then we started. And then, yeah, the Vancouver Gamers kind of started from that. And now I'm stuck with this guy. It's, it's been five long years. <laughs> 
Um, I've, I've always enjoyed gaming. I'm, I'm a more traditional gamer. I play card games a lot. I play a lot of board games. Um, I started in high school. I played bridge for 10 years before really picking up gaming. Um, didn't really have access to consoles back then, but I have access to cards, so I can count cards now. Um, but um, I've always been the type to be in the corner, the shy little one, doing not a whole lot. So board games was easy for me, right? So I picked up board games before I really brought it into the gay community aspect in Vancouver. I have at least a half a dozen uh, board gaming guilds that I'm a part of, um, but there was no real gay aspect to it. A lot of people, when they think board games, they think Monopoly. They think uh, life. Um, there's much more diversity within the board games that I am hope that I try to bring to the gay community and introduce them to a, a new aspect of gaming. So um, I joined the Gay Gamer Forum, um, what, five years ago, six years ago, and I help run the board gaming aspect and different events um, with it, so. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a gamer all my life. I knew it, you know, before most of my friends in high school. And just to preface the, the, the where I grew up, I grew up in Wisconsin and a very conservative area. So it wasn't, it, even games, just games, was something that was like, really? You know, you need to get a job in, in the paper mill down the street, you know, with your, your dad, your grandfather, and worked there for 40 years. You don't have time for games, son. You know, that, that's what I grew up with. So it was difficult to stick, to find friends in general that liked games, never mind friends that were gay gamers. And so I struggled through that, um, fast forwarding through my life story. I don't want to go into that too much either. But I got through college and I said, you know what? I need to see more than Wisconsin. I need to get out. I hear there's cool stuff elsewhere. So you know, maybe I should check that out. And I said, well, where can I go? And I. I didn't just go, well, let's check out Minnesota or Chicago or whatever. I said, let's go to China. And I, I was just like, let's go somewhere that's the, the farthest I can possibly get away from, from where I grew up, just to make sure I had a good perspective of, of a difference. And wow, was that a, a perspective? Because I, I went there, by the way, to teach English. That's a good way to to go um, for a low cost if you want to see part of the world, uh, explore different cultures. And uh, one of my uh, d goals was just to see, well, do, do the Chinese play games? I hear, I know the Asians like games in general, right? <laughs> I think. I heard something about StarCraft in Korea. Yeah. Uh, and they do, very much so. I, uh, I was in Beijing, te practices teaching. You actually go over there to get your certificate to teach so it, I mean it's hard to screw up really honestly teaching English just general like A B C D you know except when you get to Z they like the they do the British English over there I mean, I, maybe Z. That's like, Z. yeah Z yeah the first time I heard that from the kids X Y Z I'm like wait what was that so there, you know little tweaks to the culture again little unexpected changes and one of the unexpected things I found was in the basement of a KFC they love KFC they love chicken over there I was like, oh, I gotta get some, I gotta get some chicken. I'm hungry here. I'm just walking around the streets, you know, aimlessly. I don't know where I am right now. So I go in the KFC and then I see the staircase down to some basement. One light, dim. I'm like, that's weird. Let's go check it out. So I go down there. A couple of really small hallways. Turns later, it opens up into a room at least this size, packed to the rim with computers and gamers. And I was like, that is awesome. In the basement of a KFC. Where can you get that? China. So it, and I, I kept a lot of those friends too. I, I kept many of those friends on Facebook and, and other social channels. And I think, uh, you know, I guess my point there is that you can, you can find, the, and the, there were many of them, as far as I know, most of them were fine with me. They were straight. Although they were very conservative too, so it was sometimes hard to read. But in general, you know, they were cool with it. And the, and this is in China, so it's not quite as progressive, I think, yet as here. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, it's and it, it is kind of interesting the connections you make because uh, when I went to high school, my best friend from high school, um, we were both the theater nerds. So we did like Shakespeare and like musical theater and stuff, and we like were all about Jablo and what else did we play back then? Like Spore, that was kind of our thing. <laughs> so and it's interesting now because he's completely straight, um, but we've kind of both kind of gone into this like part performance, part cosplay, still nerdy kind of track. Um, uh, and I've been finding that a lot of the connections I've been making lately, like a lot of gamers are coming out of the woodwork. Like, I think it was amazing having this convention together. Cause like, if I, you had told me that I'd be, you know, sitting in a gay gamer convention, like three years ago, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sh yeah, right. But then, you know, this happened and it's, it's all sorts of amazing. Um, now I find like, so kind of like talking about the difference between connecting with gamers then and now, like. Back then, it was yeah, it was kind of like going to a basement at the bottom of a KFC in China. It's you had to go to the forums or what was that thing with like the the, the those chat chats things IRLs chat or chat windows. IRC. Remember those IRCs? <laughs> oh, those are the days. <laughs> like those, like you know, it was kind of like that. And now we've kind of because we're such a technologic advance, we've kind of accelerated. And now there's all these like baby gamers coming out of Reddit, like the gay bros. Which I do not identify with. I cannot imagine calling myself a gay bro. But hey, if you know people like that label, then hey, I'll, like I'm all for it. <laughs> um, and it is curious because also in Vancouver, one of the amazing things is like the the local media is being taken interest. So like our local gay newspaper actually came out and like went to our meetup, and you know we got filmed by Logo TV. And yeah, there's like they're like promoting this stuff, and so a lot a lot more people is like being. It's weird, but it's like having to come out twice. It's like it's becoming more and more accepted to be gay and a gamer at the same time. It's like you're a nerd, ooh. So like now it's like everybody plays Settlers of Catan, <laughs> kind of thing. So nineties. <laughs> um, our our local board game store really did support our our events. They come out and uh, they've come out to several of our gay events and. Um, Actually, they, there's a there's a it's a suburb in Vancouver called New Westminster, and they are trying to actually have us as part of their parade as um, as an event. So, um, just because we've done so much work with them and they appreciate it, and um, yeah, they they really like us. So, yeah. well, well, we're jumping ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I did have a kind of a question to ask. It's weird. I'm kind of moderating my own panel. I'm used to having like somebody give me a list of questions. So I just kind of came up with a list of questions. So like the next kind of question that I kind of thought up was, uh, what events engage your own gamer community the most? Because I have been, uh, you know, as a, as an organizer for meetups, that is one of my challenges now. Because before it was basically, hey, let's get a bunch of guys together, let's put on some Smash Brothers, some Mario Kart, let's throw on a place where they can put out board games. And that's that. We've been doing that for the past five years. Like people are getting, you know, like it's 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 a working formula. We do need some change. Um, so that's kind of one of the things. Like we have been getting a lot of requests more for like more outdoor stuff. Um, you know, more parties, more movies, um, just other social events. And the group has kind of because people have been going to it for five years. Like for a lot of people, that is their social life now. Um, so a lot of people kind of. I'm a queen bee, so I don't really hang out with anybody except for this guy. Because, <laughs> you know, I just Five like years. that. I, I like to keep that distance. But, um, you know, it's amazing because, you know, I, I just see, like, they have New Year's together. It's like some people are, like, that close in the group, which I think is kind of crazy. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, from my perspective, I try and keep it diverse, right? So... If there's new games coming in, if there's uh, new board games coming in, I try and introduce board games. I teach board games all the time. Um, yeah, I try and see what else we can bring in. Um, I see if I can get uh, new designers to come in and demo their games whenever possible. Um, talk to talk to people within the local um, EA, for example, see if there's any uh, connections we can build there. So, yeah. So, um, so the, and again, the, so the reason why we kind of got this panel together is we're, we're going to talk about allies. So everyone, I'm assuming, is familiar with what the concept of allies is. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the next question I have is what are examples of times when you've worked with allies on a community level or a professional level? So, yeah. So Ian brought up a really, really good example of one. So we have the board game warriors. Um, when we started five years ago, basically they just started their new um, board game club and we went, we asked them if Sundays we could get every first Sunday of the month. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can't remember what, what we got the first time. But then we've been going there every month pretty much and we've actually given them so much revenue from that gaming, from our gaming days that like they love, ha they, and they love having us anyway. That's kind of like an added bonus, but it kind of made us part of their community as well. And it's great because now they go to like whenever we have like drag shows, they show up kind of thing. Um, so they're really, really supportive. And then... Uh, <laughs> and our other venue um, is a, an Italian cafe, and I thought for the longest time that the owner was straight and that he just really, really liked us. <laughs> and then a, a friend of his showed up, and I'm like, wait a second. You knew working a gay dar. I have a, well, I have a pretty good like boyfriend dar. I have a really bad gay dar, but I have a pretty good boyfriend dar. <laughs> Unfortunately, not for like people good for me, but other people sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, but in that cafe, so the owner's gay, but like all of his staff are straight, and they're like so freaking helpful. Like they'll set up just dance for us. Uh, you know, whenever we have events, they're like, oh, is it okay if I come? Yeah. Why not? Um, and and so again, we, we just keep finding a lot of straight nerds are really open. I find to the concept of being part of queer spaces. So and and they didn't announce this year that they're going to change the name. So hopefully it's going to be something inclusive because I I do enjoy that diversity within safe spaces that we have. Um, so so. You've worked in games on a professional level, so kind of like, have you made any kind of ally connections? Yeah, it's actually interesting. Just a couple hours ago, I was uh, in a panel. Well, it wasn't a panel. It was a uh, roundtable. And uh, it was to discuss LGBT issues in the, the game communities. And since I'm a community manager, I was like, wow, i got to go to this thing. I have a few things to say. And I thought it was going to be everybody was gonna be LGBT on some level. And we were gonna discuss our, our issues and concerns and how we can you know, make this uh, more inclusive to those who are in communities and games that aren't out, but wanna still pick that one special character in their game. But I, it was surprising that at least, there was 12, 14 of us, at least four, if not five, were just in the game industry straight who had visited the, the event. They, they just wanted to help out. And that really, I think, kind of gave me a little bit of a, a opening into that, like you kind of said, like with the, with the event, you know, yes, the, the owner is, is gay, but all of his workers are straight, yet they still want to, hey, can I participate? Can I help out? I saw that too, just this morning. Uh, so it was, you know, more recent example of uh, how it can it, it can work both ways. It's not just us trying to reach out. Um, you, you have straight allies too that just want to, you know, bring everybody together too. And uh, we also so the Super Friends are big kind of biggest achievement so far. Achievements. Um, uh, we got a Pride float together last year for the Vancouver Pride Parade in three months. <laughs> Which is a little insane. Um, so what had happened was uh, one of my kind of most recognizable cosplays, besides Maleficent now, um, is Queen Amidala. I couldn't bring her because she doesn't fit on the plane. <laughs> like yeah, she'd be my suitcase basically. Um, but uh, I went as Queen Amidala to one of our big uh, Vancouver conventions called Fan Expo, and. Um, it was the second time I'd done her at that convention, so people kind of recognize me now, because the first year, the reaction generally was, that's a guy. Um, so now I was like, hey, it's that dude, Amidala. That's, you know, it, it is what it is. But, um, but, you know, so a lot of people were coming to me, and they were going, hey, is there anything going on for Pride? Like, what's happening for, like, Gay Geeks of Pride? And I'm like, nothing. Why? Why are so many people asking me this? I guess we're doing something gay for Pride? 
geeky. Um, so I, I kind of started thinking, it's like, how can I pull this off in three months? Because the convention was in April and the, the parade was in August. It actually was the exact same weekend as last year's GamerX, which is why we couldn't be here. Hmm, sad face. Um, so I started asking people like who has interest in kind of getting a float together, you know, who wants to do cosplay, who like has the budget for to get like a bus together. And it wasn't um and you know, I got support for like Ian and, and the gamers, but actually the people who kind of really stepped up to the plate were actually like friends that I had that were straight from within the cosplay community. Um so we had we had this bus called the Love Bus. Um, it's this giant pink bus, and the guy who runs it is... I never actually questioned him about his sexuality, but he seems mostly straight. I think he's pretty fluid, but he's just happy, lovey-dovey, hippie, awesome guy. Um, he owns a pink bus. He owns a pink bus. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's Ryan. And then uh, we actually managed to get most of our funding together th um, through my friend Greg, who... Uh, <laughs> Not only though, I think we actually got some. Uh, so this is the interesting thing about making straight allies. He's completely straight, but one thing he really, will, really, really wanted to do for our fundraiser was dress up as Riku. And I was like, hmm, I think we're helping Greg discover or giving Greg, giving Greg a platform to kind of explore parts of himself, um, which is great. Um, cause he's still straight, you know, I think that's, as far as I know, that's still the only time he's ever done drag. Um, and Greg's like, he's a, he's a big bear with a beard. So we basically called it Manku and he totally rocked it cause he like had the hair and then he just had the bra and then he was just like, yeah. Cause you know, most people are like the first time like, oh no, I'm not sure. Like he didn't give a shit. So it was just like, yeah. It actually walked in the pride parade in it, which is amazing. Um, and then, yeah, other people just started coming out of the woodwork, and that's why we kind of called it the Super Friends, is because it, it was different people coming together. Um, my, my best friend from high school, who was also nerdy, he helped out, because he kind of helped some of the other cosplayers get on. And it was interesting, because, say, we got, like, the Ghostbusters of BC to join us. The Ghostbusters are pretty open. They're not used to being around queers, at least I felt. So that was also interesting too, because uh, like you know they were cool. They they were they were with us. Um, one of them is like Ryan. Ryan's a doll. He's a, he's he's so sweet. But then there were other members that were like were there to participate and be part of the fun. But it was also kind of a learning experience for them, because you know like when especially when they're talking to me, they're like, I don't really know what to do in this situation right now. Which is like I'm I'm glad they kind of. Talk to that because even gay guys go up to me and like, I don't know how to talk to a drag queen. And I'm like, I'm not most drag queens, but you know. <laughs> um, You're just a sister. I'm also a sister. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so without allies, basically, we wouldn't have been able to put that float together in three months. And actually, it was so successful, we actually ended up on the cover of the Vancouver Sun the next day. Like, out of all the floats, there's like, like the Vancouver Pride Parade is three hours long. Out of all the floats in that parade, the picture they chose was, um, it was Bad Girl in Poison Ivy holding hands on top of our pink bus. So that was kind of the cherry on top of my pride last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so on that note, or do you have any kind of stories? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit different, um, <coughs> but I, I feel it's really helped those uh, that are game, gay gamers in on my Facebook page that, uh, or in my Facebook page, friend group, I should say, um, by coming out on Facebook this Friday. Um, this weekend I came here partly because it's, well, today's my birthday, and I was like, oh, let's just do everything. Happy Thank birthday. you. We should all sing him happy birthday. Ready, uh, everyone? No, no, it's okay. Okay, Let's do it. No? Maybe later. Uh, um, maybe at the bar. Yeah, at the bar later. <laughs> we'll do it at the end. You can buy me a drink. Yeah. Um, so what I did was Friday I, I hosted a panel, moderated panel, uh, coming out in the game industry. Did anybody attend that? Okay. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. I tried to. It was full. Yeah, it was pretty full, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we had a good turnout. Um, and what I did was at the beginning of the panel, I posted on my Facebook wall, hey, I'm at GamerX, and I just wanted to show you know, some encouragement to those who are not maybe out yet in, on my Facebook wall, obviously. Um, to start with, that it's okay. And now I'm a professional in the, the game industry. I have, 
hundreds of connections on Facebook that are with CEOs, um, designers, programmers, fellow community managers, a lot of people. And I take my career very seriously that way. So I was a little nervous about, well, you know, what's going to happen. But I had to show encouragement because I wanted to show encouragement to show, I want to present encouragement to show others who are not out what could happen. And I honestly didn't know, well, what was going to happen? You know, am I going to help or am I going to hurt these others that are, you know, they, that want to express themselves also? And what, what actually happened is I checked at the end of the Facebook, uh, at the end of the panel, and I showed everybody at the panel without knowing what was said, um, comments and likes on the, my Facebook wall uh, post. And luckily, I had over 100 likes at that point already and dozens of comments of support from coworkers. Uh, people that I thought were very, you know, conservative, very butch, very, you know, I'm going to go deer hunting this weekend. And it was, it was cool. Um, strangely, I had more from everybody else other than my family. But again, I'm from Wisconsin, so I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> but, you know, it was good. It was really all positive comments. And I, I'd like to think that helped those uh, that, you know, want to come out that are, that saw that anyway. Yeah, and, and, and like personally, like this weekend, I'm actually staying with cousins, and I actually haven't seen any family for four years because I'm pretty private. Like, I am very flamboyant, but in terms of family life, I kind of tend to not just avoid talking to my family. Um, luckily enough, I do have like they're cousins, so they're kind of my generation, and they're uh, staying here in San Francisco, and uh, it, it's been very eye-opening because uh, they're pretty chill. They're, they're they're I knew they were always been more liberal, but like last night at the party, they picked me up from here, here, like I was hammered, because I was just drinking away. And uh, you know, I was just talking, talking my app off, and the, uh, I had my, he's 18, so he's legal in the Philippines, so I don't really care, but like I had my, my, my nephew in the car, so there was, you know, drunk, crazy Uncle Justin in this Maleficent costume. Um, and it just surprised me how open they were to just having, you know, this drag queen in the family. So that was cool. And again, like I wouldn't have been able to do anything I've done this weekend, show up as Maleficent, show up as Ariel this morning. Like, you know, my cousin woke up at 10 this morning to drive me here. So like having like allies like that, I think is, has been a boon. And I think one thing that we have in the community is we, we need to be less afraid of kind of approaching people um, for help. Uh, Cause I think sometimes it's just a matter of asking. Cause I think I do a lot of, especially depending on what city you live in, but like cities like here or Vancouver, it's, it's a lot of people do kind of have an openness to that. Being in San Francisco, being in a city like Vancouver is a huge difference. Um, mm. My previous job, I used to work as a slot machine designer, um, and I would have to go to Oklahoma for work, and that's not a fun place. Uh, being gay and being Asian, probably the only one in 100 miles some, at times. And going to a town that's 5,000 people, and the only thing that's supporting that industry is the casino, very unique. Um, so, I mean, to come to a city like San Francisco, it's, it, you appreciate the openness. Yeah. So. Like, last night, um, I was just wandering around as Maleficent, and people were like, oh, I just watched that movie, kind of thing. Like, in Vancouver, you wouldn't get that. All you get is, like, an up-down, like, I'm judging you right now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or people were like honking at me, but usually when I get honked at, it's usually like, huh, frag it. I'm like, you got it. Good job. Here it's like, huh, huh, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> so it's, it, which is really cool. It, 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 is, it is cool, and like I'm aware we are in kind of a bubble because there are certain cities where you definitely, like, I'd never do this in Pax Houston. Like, uh, I think it's San Antonio. Or Pax San Antonio. Pax South San Antonio, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that, that event I'm actually excited by. I, I run a event website, Events for Gamers, and I track all the game industry events. So we just added last week PAX South. Um, so if anybody's a PAX fan, in case you didn't know, um, obviously we have PAX Prime, Seattle, woohoo, my favorite. And uh, PAX, where am I? PAX East, Boston, and, and now PAX South San Antonio. So those who are like me going in the wrong geographical direction in the game industry have hope that. Texas is not all barren. Yeah. Oh, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, PAX is kind of one interesting political discussion in the community right now. Because uh, last year, after yet another, I'm not going to bring it up, 
but like the word. But you know, after yet another foot and mouth situation from PAX, a lot of people were very open to, and I was very open to the the notion of boycotting PAX. You know, they're dicks. Nah, 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 nah. But uh, you know, in our community, we kind of talked about it. Like PAX is kind of one of the cornerstones of our year. It's like a lot of the Vancouver gamers go down to Seattle. We get sloshed at the pink party. We spend the night, you know, just like hanging out with our Seattle friends. Um, and that's that is a big year because a lot of us like I'm a big video gamer so for me that's kind of like the time I go and I see like what my year is going to look like in terms of gaming if I can get the time. <laughs> um, so we had this discussion and for me my what I kind of concluded was uh, we do know that the staff at PAX even though the guys who write PAX are don't exactly have the best kind of control over what they say or tweet. Um, we do realize that a lot of the staff at PAX are like amazing and amazing allies. So it's like two, granted they're the two guys at the top and then all the other people at the bottom who are allies. And I think they're slowly getting it. Um, it's been a very big kind of frustrating battle. I haven't heard any bad news about PAX since or from, I forget his name, but uh, uh, so at PAX East this year, they started a thing called the Diversity Lounge. Um, which some of the Seattle gamers are involved in. So um, what it is, is they, they have a lounge where there's a couple of different booths that are queer specific. Um, is it the best solution? No. Like, I think, honestly, we should just be part of the bigger convention. Like, why should we have our own separate area? Um, but, you know, is it a step forward? I think it's a step. It's a step. Forward or backward, who knows? But I think it is a step, and like for us, so we're going to be going to PAX Prime, which is a big deal. It's PAX Prime, um, and we're going to have a, a, a combined group uh, booth there with the Toronto and the Vancouver gamers, which is very exciting, um, because the leader of the Toronto gamers is also a Filipino <laughs> drag queen who has an Ursula costume. <laughs> so she's an evil twin. Is that what you said? I don't know. I'm like afraid if we like meet, are we gonna have to like fight for the death <laughs> 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 or something? So, yeah. yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Um, so one of the challenges that we have found with working with allies, though, is that there is a lot of education necessary because some people, even though they are really willing to help you out, there is that whole. Sometimes they just don't get it even though they want to help. Um, I have run into situations where I have like an ally who's all gung-ho and then he asked me, what's the difference between like a gay and homosexual? There's a difference, right? <laughs> it's like one of them is like, more, like means you're more flamboyant or something. And I'm like, uh, oh dear, we need to sit you down, honey. <laughs> yeah, so I have found that, uh, so in terms of like working with allies, that is kind of my biggest thing is there is, some degree of education involved. Because um, like, as a community, we have a lot of labels and terms. And like, you know, like, I, it took me forever to learn them myself. And now having to educate everyone else on it is kind of a big struggle. You know, I'm lucky because I went to San, uh, Simon Fraser University. <laughs> um, and so I, I was volunteering at the Queer Center for a while. So that's kind of where I got my kind of boot, like, boot camp education on, you know, trans language, how to use Zay, Z, 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 Z kind of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, just all the different levels of queerness that you can achieve. So, uh, what was my question? Yeah, so like, do you guys have any thoughts on like what kind of communication or education is? Well, I guess uh, from a developer perspective again, um, there is a lot of interest in equality. I use this on my Friday panel as a key word to keep in mind, equality. And there is a growing amount of emphasis on equality in the game industry um, for LGBT and many other things. Uh, because I think games can really provide a, an opportunity to express a lot of these things. And that's, you know, that's what the games are partly about. But there's a lot of confusion too, like you said, where well, it's the title, like, you know, is it gay, is it homosexual, you know, what word do we use here? But there's also, uh, I've found, while there's interest in including these groups, there's also a overemphasis, too, which I think has, I've seen, I've seen a few times, and I think is, in, in the sense of, well, let's, you know, make all our characters gay. Let's just go full throttle. And you, you can get to a point where you can 
send the wrong message or send a message that's you know like you're pushing this on people and you don't want to push we want to be inclusive we don't want to be overpowering or like we're taking over the world even though we are secretly so it, you know I think there's some finesse on the message in there yet on the developer side I agree <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm, I'm a man of few words yeah 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 so actually perfect timing so yep that's cool all right so I'm an ally I'm straight um, it has been kind of tough like it's been a long process to kind of learn more about like this community and a specific language and I've already been in instances where like I might have said not like an offensive word but like the wrong term to like mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. and I immediately got backlash because like it wasn't the right thing to say even though it wasn't wrong exactly so like there is a lot of nuance that's necessary and there's kind of this inherent barrier uh, because there's no like onboarding process for allies to like get involved right like they have to actively uh, try to learn from people that they know or from gay communities but I think like it would be great if there was just some easier way GamerX obviously helps but there's no mm -hmm. way. here's how to be a good ally a guy you know I mean something like that um, that kind of lessens that barrier would be a great step in getting more allies involved with yeah which is partly why the super friends kind of besides the cosplay stuff one of the things we are wanting to do is kind of an educational tool so either videos or like we have a website right now and we have a couple of pointers on it um, basically like uh, on safe sp it's more, not so much how to be an ally but more on safe spaces so we have a couple of points of like um, so 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 you want to go to a convention and you're not sure if it's a safe space or not this is how you can stay safe so part of it's like you know finding allies like you know hey you're you know if you're like female but you have you know have you know you have like straight guy buddies who go to this convention all the time and you want to try it out and you want to go in costume it's like you know if you're not feeling too sure find a friend to go with you um or you know don't be afraid to call for help because like the first time i went out in drag it's like some guy grabbed my butt and i was so shocked because i did not expect it i just didn't say anything now i have a pretty like hey how's it going it's like now i have a pretty good defense mechanism well like and and you said you had backlash that you encountered i mean it could be a sore point for, for those that um, have been used the wrong term multiple times before, and, and they're just, they're tired, it's a bad day for them. It, it happens, unfortunately. And the community is constantly evolving, so like, there are certain words, and you know, like for me, it, it has been a slow kind of educational road, as I explained for myself, because you know, I, I'm genderqueer, I don't necessarily identify as gay, or as, as, as a cis guy, or a trans, um, so I'm kind of like, just I don't really give a rat's ass to be honest. Like you call me whatever pronoun you want. How about, um, how about Ariel right now? Yeah, I'm Ariel. Hi, good morning. Um, <laughs> um, so I five minutes. Oh, oh my god, uh, we've been talking a lot. Um, so yeah, so um, like one thing that I was doing, I used to have this Instagram thing on my Instagram where I called it Tranny on Transit. Sorry for if I offend anyone. But obviously, I had it, I had it running for a year, and then someone called me out on it on Facebook. So then I had to call it Queen on Transit. Not as inter like it's not as catchy, but it's a lot less offensive, obviously, because I don't want to use the T word. Um, so it, like yeah, so that's partly why. Um, so I completely understand where you're coming from, because like I run into it myself all the time. Like I'll say something, and someone will call me out on it. Or, or like the term queer used to be really offensive. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I said homosexual instead of gay, and that's where I got called out. Like, they, they took that negatively. Like, okay. Yeah. Some people, though, it, it, it could be just be background or, like, bad experiences or, like, just putting it out there. Age is a big thing because uh, queer is a perfect example because I have older gay friends who cannot call themselves queer. I'm all for it. Like, I love the word queer. Like, yeah, queer, bring it on. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have five minutes. Uh, do, we, does, do we have any more questions from folks? No? Should I just keep talking about? Uh, the topic was like how to make friends that are straight, so can you speak to that at all? Or like, making like ally friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, yeah, I think a lot of it was kind of with my comment of like not being afraid to just approach people. Because, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, big ally. Again, uh, Matt actually last year at GDC, like he had his makeup on and everything, and he had like his giant mohawk, and he just came up, gave me a hug. He's like, hey, I'm Matt. And like that's how I was introduced to this whole scene. So, don't be afraid to go for it. Yeah. I, I can't say that you won't find any negativity, but you won't know until you try that like there are people out there that want to help. So I know it sucks. Like I know there's been tons of persecution and negativity, but you just gotta try it. And you know you'll, you'll you will find the right people. You will. You're gonna have to sift through a lot of shit, but you will find the right people. I mean, it, it depends on each different community. I find. I mean, I. I I'm, I'm a board gamer. I, I find the board game community is very inclusive. It's a, it's a very educated um, population, typically. And I have gone to multiple gaming groups that have never been rejected, mm -hmm. except for this crazy guy that thought killing meeples in the board game was, because he was vegetarian, he couldn't do that. So <laughs> besides from that, everything was fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is kind of, like making friends in general. It's, you know, like I have a lot of ally friends and, you know, some of them I hang out with all the time, like my best friend from high school, love him to pieces, you know, because we, we have a lot of similar interests and, you know, he has a girlfriend now and they have an awesome dog. So I like, you know, it's, when we hang out, it's family. But and then I have other allies that are like, I see red cons and that's awesome. Um, so so part of I think part of it, too, is kind of when you come out to someone a lot of us kind of take our identities kind of like really strongly um, and that kind of becomes our, th our shtick. So we talk more about like our sexuality and, and you know, and that kind of, if you notice that you're constantly bringing out your identity as topic of conversation instead of your similar interests with the other person, because that's the biggest thing. It's when you're connecting with someone who's not like you, everyone wants to meet other people who have similar interests as them, right? Unless they're specifically looking to add diversity into their spectrum. So if you are looking to kind of find more allies, then yeah, finding things in common, so, you know, like like I said, like, you know, when uh, Jake Jablo was a big thing for me and my buddy, like that's that was our thing. I was the crazy sorceress and he had his, uh, this like crazy knight and yeah, that's so stereotypical now to think about it. Um, yeah, we just go around and you just click, 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 click together and yeah, that, and that was bonding with a straight guy. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I can add to that real quick. I think we got like a minute left. Um, there, yep, two minutes. <laughs> two oh, minutes. I got two minutes. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, when I posted on my Facebook wall, I expected to lose a few friends just because. Guess what? I gained a friend. Oh. I got. I had somebody Aww. who was like, "Can I join you?" So I was like, "Wow, that's great." Sometimes you just got to get out there and just, you know, it, to speak to your question. How how do you? gain allies, well, sometimes you, like I, I did, depending on your situation, I don't recommend it for everybody. I mean, everybody's, you know, where you live, who you, you know, weigh your options. Um, but I felt it was the right time, and I gained a friend. So I hope that speaks to the idea that sometimes if you're comfortable with who you are and you have a community, we're all a community here, then, uh, you know, maybe it's time to reach out to that next step and to not, even if you do lose a friend or two, to not really care about that because there's always going to be that one or two that are frankly assholes, just put it mm -hmm. simply. Yeah. Yep. Um, how do you guys deal with like messages online when you're like playing games and stuff and you get like a lot of messages that are, that use hateful language or like offensive language? Uh, like how do you guys deal with situations like? Yeah, because face, sorry. Yeah, Facebook's kind of done this amazing thing where I post something and then someone's friend will start trolling me, or like stuff like that, right? Uh, it depends on the person. Like, I try to engage them usually and like kind of like, hey, like you're using offensive language, or like especially if the is this people you know or people you don't know. Yeah, that's the thing with trolls. With trolls, it's kind of like, <laughs> don't feed them. Some days it's like, don't poke the bear. <laughs> Other days, I try to engage them, you know, just say, it's offensive, can we go? Uh, okay, wrapping up. But yeah, so that one, it's kind of totally like 
her or you could like talk to your mutual friend and see is this someone who just trolls all the time or can I actually have a conversation so that one's like maybe just kind of like get a better sense of the situation and kind of take it from there does that help yeah I get trolled all the time like I'll post an article about being an extrovert and it'll be like that's extroverted privilege and I'm like hi pre person I don't know um so, but you know, and then it'll turn into this like flaming war. But um, so, before everyone goes, let's um, wish every uh, let's sing Matthew a happy birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matthew. Happy birthday to you. So thanks for coming, everyone. Um, if you want to stay connected, uh, um, we're uh, our groups are Vancouver Gamers. That's pretty easy to remember. And then our other page is the BC Super Friends. And do you have any? Yeah. Uh, Houston Gamers. I, they're, they're a group that um, are central to Houston. So let me know if you have any questions about them.